it's time to restock and reorganize my working at Prepper Pantry. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I have let my Prepper Pantry go, I'm going to be honest. It has been super busy. We've got a, we have had a busy summer and I've just been buying stuff and just putting it in here randomly on the shelves, stocking it on the floor, and it is time for me to get in here and get it organized. So that's what we are doing today. But I'm doing things a little different because I was gifted a extra shelf. Um, it is one of the metal shelves and I decided to put it downstairs in the basement instead of putting it up here. And my thought process behind this was, y'all know, well, unless you're new here, my goal for this year is to work on more of the emergency side of my pantry and long-term food storage. So I thought instead of putting it all together, I would do it separate. So if you are new here, I have a working prepper pantry. This is all the stuff that you see behind me is what we use month to month, except for I do stock emergency foods, like dry milk, um, we store water, um, you know, other things like that, um, you know, proteins and whatnot to have for emergencies. If there's, you know, no electricity, no running water, we can cook and use what we have in, you know, in that situation. But for the most part, I have a working prepper pantry. So we use it you know, week to week, month to month, whatever the case is, and I just restock and replenish. But one of my goals this year was to work on more of the emergency side of things. So since I was gifted that shelf, I decided to take it downstairs where the deep freeze is. Um, so downstairs, that is the back half of the basement where um, it is climate control. It's, um, it's, it's honestly cooler. It's probably the coolest place in the house because it's underground. So it's kind of like a built-in cellar without it being, you know, a cellar. But it is on the back side of the house. Um, like I said, all underground. So I thought that I would do my emergency long-term food storage down there. So we're going to take and rotate some of this stuff out of here that is long-term, um, like my dried fruit foods and kind of stuff like that. The stuff I store mainly for emergencies and I'm gonna take and put it downstairs. Now y'all aren't gonna actually see me putting it downstairs. That's gonna be a whole separate video. I have purchased Mylar bags to start stocking long-term um, foods for us. So I'm working on that. That's a whole separate video. So once I get all that done filmed and ready to go, y'all will see that um, hopefully the end of this month, if not um, probably maybe August. <laughs> the summer has flew by, but that's my goal um, is to work on the more long term. But like I said, I want to get this restocked in here, rotate stuff out that needs to go downstairs. That's part of our emergency food storage. So that way I have more room to stock our more everyday working prepper pantry foods. So let me get you turned around. We'll start getting all this stuff organized and get it nice and pretty again. Okay, y'all, so I'll share real life with you guys. And here is a real life prepper pantry. One of my jugs of water has busted. I am not sure how long, because like I said, this month has been busy. Um, it, it had, one of the jugs had a little hole at the top. So luckily it didn't drain the whole thing. It just, you know, drained it down to where that pinhole was. But this is the exact reason as to why we check our stock and make sure we keep things rotated. It doesn't look like it has damage, but this is also another reason why I want to get the water downstairs because this is hardwood floors. So, um, you know, me taking that water downstairs is going to be way better because it's going to be on concrete and, um, you know, it's not going to damage in case this happens again. But this is just one prime example to make sure you take the time, look through your stock, 
rotate it and check it because that can happen. It can happen to anybody. Like I said, luckily the hole was at the top so it didn't drain too, too much. Um, you know, if it had a busted at the bottom, we could have had a whole gallon of water on the floor, but um, luckily it was only at the top. Strikes by my window Hits my chest right in the morning Like a warning Could have slept here for days Shut my eyes, trying not to speak, pretend that I'm dreaming. I smell your breath, and 
So much better, <laughs> much needed. So let's go through and I'll kind of show you um, what I keep in my prepper pantry. If you are new here, I have a whole prepper pantry playlist. I'll have it linked down below. It's just from like me starting my prepper pantry a few years ago to now and tips and tricks and even how to grow a prepper pantry as a beginner for only $5 a week. I did move around some canned goods, which that is one of the things that I like to do. Um, whenever I get in here and do a rotate, I like to move around the heavy items to kind of balance out the shelves. I did give the, get these shelves from Sam's Club. They were like $49.99 a piece. We have been using them from day one and they are really, really good quality. I'll always get comments like, no, you need to have different shelves. I would recommend these shelves. Um, as long as you keep your food rotated, like the heavier items kind of change it around once a month. We have not had any issues with them. I love them. So I did move the canned goods down. We, um, I like to keep a flat or two of each kind. And I want to mention too that this is, like I said at the beginning, this is a working prepper pantry. So I restock and replenish and, you know, buy new every single week for it. So, and it is something that I'm slowly building to get at least a year's worth of food. So you might see something that I only have a couple cans of, but I'm just working on building it. So we've got um, a few cans of cream style and we've got two rows of regular corn because that's something that we use a lot of. We've got a couple cans of mixed vegetables. We don't eat a lot of mixed vegetables, but I like to keep four on hand in case, you know, just in case we need them. It's easier just to grab and go. And then um, some spinach and artichoke because I like to do spinach and artichoke dip. And in case I can't get the frozen or anything, I like to have those on hand. We've got a couple cans of yams and then some whole potatoes. Um, I keep my flour in these five gallon buckets. Now this is not a food grade bucket, but I've been storing my flour in here for a few years and I have not had any issues with it. No bugs, no nothing. Keep it sealed good. And like I said, I rotate it. So it's not just been sitting in there for a few years. You know, I'll use it, put a new one in there, and restock and replenish. We have got um, some green beans. We've got peas. We use a lot of peas, so I've got two rows of peas. I want to get two rows of carrots and two rows of green beans. Just working on it. I did pull my um, soups to put down in the emergency stock because it's summertime. We don't eat them. And they have a couple year shelf life, so I went ahead and moved those down. Um, I did keep these up here because they are closer to date. So if need be, you know, these are here and I can use these first. We've got our drinks. A little bit of everything. Um, juices and everything for Winston. We have got our milk. So what I decided to do on the milk, because we do use these. Like if he goes and stays the night with somebody... I'll take one, you know, and he can have it. Where he is lactose intolerant, you know, it's just easier for me to provide it for him than to have them get it and, you know, waste a whole half gallon. So I do buy the single servings as well as the smaller cartons. So I left those up here. Um, I did take two of them downstairs because they were dated for next year. These are, these 
um, end date in November and December. So we'll make sure to re, you know, we'll make sure to use these throughout the next months, but then replenish as needed so they're longer dates. We've got a lot of Gatorade. There's a big one behind the tea bags. Um, that's just good to have electrolytes. Luke does use that time to time for working. He works out in the heat, so he makes a big jug of it and takes it with him. Got extra tea bags. We've got other smaller tea bags. And then we've got like Kool-Aid, drink mixes, and stuff like that in there. This one, I've got all my cream soups and it's, uh, like specialty Campbell's cans that I like. We got tomato, golden mushroom, uh, cheddar cheese, beef consomme, uh, cream of mushroom. These are ones I like to keep on hand. I need to do a restock on them. As you can tell, I'm getting low on my French onion and my cream of mushroom, but we use a ton of those. Um, and then that's just a flat of cream of mushroom and cream of chicken. We've got some tomato products, green chilies, black olives, salsa. We have got some spaghetti sauce, different kinds. I looked up and found these for 79 cents a piece. That was a good deal, so I picked those up. We got rice. I did pull um, my big bag of rice to put in my lower bag and put that downstairs in my emergency. But I do have a five pound bag here and then a regular one and we'll just, you know, restock and replenish that. We've got a bunch of different kinds of like quick and easy rice sides. These are ready rice. I love to keep these. If you are in an emergency, no electricity, no running water, you don't have to worry about cooking your rice. You can just dump, you know, and go. <laughs> Um, technically, you could eat this cold if need be because it is cooked, but, um, you know, I just like to keep these ready rices on hand, but we've got a bunch of different varieties back there. We've got some hamburger helper. We've got our different um, dry mixes, gravies, taco seasoning, ranch, all the above. Just a little bit of everything of what I use. Um, I keep one or two stocked of my seasonings that I use a lot of. And then I also have bouillon, we've got beef and chicken, and then we have this big thing of chicken that I got from Sands Club. I do need to do a new a restock on salt and pepper. I've only got one salt, so I do need to do another restock of that. These are our condiments that we've got going. I do need to get some more Duke's mayonnaise. We've got one. We've got a bunch of Miracle Whip. We've got soy sauce, Worcestershire uh, dressings. Just a little bit of everything here. We've got ketchup, mustard, and barbecue sauce. I just recently got those on sale where it's like the, you know, barbecue cookout season. Those were on sale, so I picked those up. We've got canned uh, beans. Great source of protein. Good to have for prepper pantry and just in general. You know, this is stuff that we use, you know, every single month, kind of. Um, like baked beans right now. We don't do soups and chilies in the summertime, but you know, these are good to have to add in if need be. I do have some dry beans here. I am going to um, put these in Mylar bags because we don't use these a lot. Um, and you know, I have these and cans, so I can put these back in Mylar bags to have for emergencies. We've got some baked beans. We always have a ton of cereal and um, pancake mixes, muffin mixes, syrup. We've got some oatmeal back there, as you can see. Um, so I just kind of keep all that stocked. We do use a lot of that. We have got some cornbread mixes, different kinds. We've got Mexican style, regular, and then we have a few pizza crusts. I do need to do another restock on the pizza crust. I like to keep those on hand. I kept two things of ramen up here because we do use those time to time. Um, I got one chicken, one beef, but I did take my other extra stock and put it back. I'm going to put it in the emergency storage. Um, we got all kinds of different kinds of pasta. I do want to get some more of that. Right now, the best price for me to find that is at the discount store. So whenever I go, I try to grab a box or two to get it super cheap. <laughs> and then here is our like snacky section. I always talk about how having guilty pleasures is something that's good to have, especially if you have kiddos to kind of help break up um, everything. And uh, so we've got just kind of a little bit of everything, crackers, cereal bars, 
Rice Krispie Treats, uh, Cheez-Its, just kind of a little bit of everything. We've got more pasta, macaroni, um, gnocchi, We've got breadcrumbs. These um, are just the, you know, Italian pasta sides, quick and easy meals. And then I, another thing I like to keep is the ready pasta. These are already cooked, so if you are in an emergency, you know, grab and go. And I wanted to mention where I'm talking about taking my emergency foods downstairs. I am keeping those up here because I do use them. Um, if I'm in a pinch and need, you know, to get dinner done quick, then I can just use that instead of cooking pasta or cooking rice. So I do leave those up here, but my more emergency things is what I'm taking downstairs. We've got some Velveeta. Um, Alfredo, I need to do another restock on both of those. I've only got one a piece. We got peanut butter, evaporated milk. I use this in recipes, so I'm keeping it up here. These are the shelf stable proteins that I'm keeping up here because we do use these month to month. Viney sausages, spam, um, little packs of bacon, the shelf stable bacon strips, as well as um, diced ham and shredded ham. And this is my little condiment bucket. This is so good to have, um, you know, grab and go. If you need ketchup, there's cheese sauce in here, marinara, there's jellies. There's like all kinds of stuff. And then this is the baking shelf. We've got sugars, um, baking mixes, cake mixes. Um, I keep applesauce in here in case I don't have eggs. Then I can replace it, you know, for eggs. You can also, I've heard you can replace it with oil as well. I have not personally had luck with replacing it with oil, but it does turn out good for me if I replace it for an egg. Spray, um, I've got, so I keep, so I keep my flour in here. So I have a lot of baking things, you know, baking powder, baking soda. I also have cornstarch and then my yeast I keep in the fridge and the freezer. So that's why y'all don't see it here, but I do keep all those things where I can make homemade breads and muffins and you know all that stuff. Uh, I do have one of each sugar in here because that will be you know restocked, used, restocked, and replenished. But I am gonna get some to put in my lar bags to put down in my emergency food storage. And then I already talked about the cans. So I think that is everything. A little bit of an overview. I've got a lot of stuff to take downstairs. The hallway is full. Um, but I'm happy that I did do this. I'm happy that I divided it out. That way I can see, you know, more of what we have and use month to month since I do have a working prepper pantry. To me, a working prepper pantry is more realistic. Um, you know, you don't want to just store things and just never touch them. You know, having a working prepper pantry really does help with budgeting, you know, groceries. If you have a tight week, a tight month, you can just shop from your pantry, fridge and freezers and, you know, be able to provide for your family. So to me, a working prepper pantry is more realistic for my family, but I do stock things for emergencies because you never know. Um, but I am glad that I divided it out and now I have more room in here to stock more of our monthly items. So happy with how it turned out. And I'm glad I got this tackled y'all because it was a hot mess. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, a few weeks, I will get out my emergency pantry going. Um, like I said, it's just gonna be a couple weeks for me to get that filmed and everything organized, how I want it down there. But this is it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.